Welcome to Wednesday Check-In here at Battlefield Assembly of God. Richard O'Rell, I get to be their pastor here. What a, a huge privilege for me. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. They know I mean it. So, uh, I've got a couple of housekeeping things here I want to be sure you know about. We are having live church uh, these days, uh, Sundays, 10.30 in the morning and 5 p.m. At 5 p.m., that's a new time for us. And so uh, be sure to note that uh, start time is 10.30 in the morning and 5 p.m. on Sundays. We are not doing our regular Wednesday night Bible study and meal and all of that. And at uh, this time we're not uh, providing Sunday school nor children's church nor nurseries. Haven't figured out how to do that with social distancing. And of course we are doing our best to practice social distancing. Lots of hand sanitizer around and uh, so strong uh, suggestions about washing your hands. We do have masks and gloves available should you arrive and feel that you'd be better off with masks and or gloves. We have a supply. So God bless you and I hope, hope to see you in worship with us. And so hey, I, I've got a couple of songs here I'm just pretty sure that you'll know. And I'm so thankful for Bill Gaither because he uh, gave us both of these. He touched me and then just the chorus of something beautiful. Here at 
together today could say the same thing. He touched me and he made something beautiful out of a messed up life. And so why don't you just say amen there where you are. It's kind of like saying, me too, Lord. Well, <clears throat> I've heard a lot, of, a lot of times in the course of my Christian career the, the terminology that um, God touched me. Okay, somebody's giving a testimony in church. We still do that here, by the way. Um, something has happened wonderful in your life and you want to share it, you get to share it here. So I hear people say that, you know, uh, things were really bad in my life, and then the Lord touched me, and they <clears throat> described some situation that was bad. And then suddenly, it's not so bad. And um, each one of them, as, as they try to quantify what they mean about uh, God touched me, is different. Um, I, I, I've just come to the point where I, I guess I want to throw the question out on the table. So is God's touch real? Are, are we saying something that, uh, that isn't really accurate? Or, or is it real and perhaps a little different for each of us? Well, maybe there's a little truth on both ends of that. <clears throat> In Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, there's a statement there. It says, all manner of diseases among the people were healed by Jesus. And so, as, as I was reading that, I was just kind of thinking, you know, my brain works that way. So what must that have been like? So there's a leper. It said all manner of diseases. So leprosy was uh, uh, specifically touched and healed by him many times. And so there's a leper, absolutely totally outcast, a pariah, unable to participate in any way uh, in community life, um, were forced to walk around with their mouth covered, uh, saying, unclean, unclean, announcing loudly, unclean. And so, up, up walks Jesus with healing in his touch. And so he reaches across the social taboos and touches the man, touches the woman, heals them. And they walk away with skin like a baby's skin. How amazing that must have been. And then blind eyes. And um, in a day when simple cataracts would, would just permanently blind the person and all the stuff that we deal with, the macular degeneration and... and um, uh, glaucoma and so forth, and uh, eye injuries, and uh, there's no such thing as OSHA in those days, and many, many, many people were injured terribly in the workplace. And so they come in with all of these difficulties and disabilities and, and illnesses and diseases, and each one is touched by the Lord and each one is set free. So, <clears throat> The Lord touched me. What do you mean when you say that? Well, some of it is physical healing. It's really obvious. You have cancer, and somebody prays with you, prays for you. Maybe it's the pastor. Maybe it's just a church member. Maybe, maybe it's somebody, a member of no particular church. They just are head over heels in love with Jesus, and somebody has compassion, and they pray for you. And oddly, uh, you get well. So how do you explain that? Uh, well, I'm, I understand the term, uh, I think I understand, the, the, the term psychosomatic. I, the essence of that is that the, the roots of my disease are emotional in nature. There's something wrong with the way I feel about life, and it has affected me in very real ways. Sometimes the psychosomatic illness can manifest itself as uh, various kinds of things, heart trouble, um, uh, blood pressure issues, and of course, uh, depression, anxiety, and um, thoughts of suicide, all of those kinds of things. So then, I guess I should say, I, I don't want to minimize 
the struggles that someone has who is struggling with uh, some sort of psychosomatic illness, an illness that has its roots in an emotional problem. Uh, but I, I, I think I should say this, that if, if you're pretty sure, I mean, you've been, you've been examined by the best and they have found nothing concrete that they can diagnose, but they do understand that there's something tragically and terribly wrong with you, and they shake their heads, and so finally they give some sort of general diagnosis, but, but it, it hasn't really settled anything, and it hasn't solved anything. If, if you're in that kind of a situation, you suspect that somehow your emotions are involved in the roots of your issue, wouldn't it make sense to approach God about an emotional healing? I mean, if the roots of my problem are emotional in nature, why not take my emotions to God? I think that's one of the most wonderful things about, about being a part of a Pentecostal church is because we're wide open to God touching us and ministering to us uh, at an emotional level. That's why people come to the altar and spend a, a lengthy period of time. It isn't that they're lost and they're looking to be saved or something like that. Often it's, it's the ones in the congregation who love God the most and, and we see that in, in patent ways in their lives and they're so hungry and they're hurting and, and they bring that to the altar and they spend time at the altar. Others come down and pray with them. And what a wonderful moment when they have some sort of breakthrough and peace settles in upon them and they go about their business with the touch of the master's hand. Well, so is that real then? Or is, is it bogus? I don't, I don't think it's bogus at all. Ask the person who's just gone through something like that. They're, they were just really destroyed. Something terrible had happened and they weren't even sure what it was. And somehow, an outpouring of love and care and concern and the touch of the Lord has reversed it all and suddenly life looks great. And, and they would be the first to say, no, this is just as real as if I had been healed of cancer or healed of a broken leg or something like that. We really do have, uh, at least our, our circles, we have a lot of unexplained wellness. Sometimes it shows up as a spontaneous remission of cancer. I mean, by all rights, they should have died months ago, in many cases, years ago. They were diagnosed many years back as being terminal with some form of cancer. There's nothing we can do, and they're still going. And so you have to say, well, hmm, that's strange. Are, are we just going to label that that the diagnosis was bogus? Are we going to say spontaneous remission? Are we going to say, well, God touched them? Uh, let's, let's go with the thing about God touching them. Why, why, not, why not let's give God some credit? I mean, that's who he is. His name is Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healeth thee. And, and so when he identifies himself like that, you can expect some spontaneous remissions of cancer. You can expect that your medications will work better and quicker than anybody has ever seen. This pill's not supposed to do that well, but it does it anyway. And so perhaps somebody would say, you know, that, that must be a good batch of medicine. But the wise will say, you know, we need to cut God in on this. We ask God to touch our brother, our sister, our friend, and they're better. So let's say God had something to do with it. The pain level begins to subside. The fracture heals quicker than anybody had ever seen. Hallelujah. In a word, yes, God's touch is very real. His name is Jehovah Rapha, Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Secondly, Jesus revealed what God is like. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, he healed all that were oppressed of the devil. Remember, he did test the one lady, the Syrophoenician woman. She needed her daughter healed. And so Jesus gently held her off for a moment 
and the faith that surfaced was so dynamic. And so he touched the girl and set her free. She was oppressed of the devil, and suddenly she was not oppressed of the devil. And so in, in those days, it was so clear-cut. wonder how come we, we've allowed it to become just a little bit cloudy. Let's, let's back off and give God some credit, okay? He healed all that were oppressed of the devil, and Jesus did that so that we would understand that's how God works, and that's the will and the plan of God. God has not changed. Remember Hebrews 13, 8? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever he was in those days gone by, he still is. He's kind, he's gentle, he's loving, and he's a healer. Would you accept that? Our assignment in the matter is pretty easy. Listen to this. If you're sick, bring your illness to God. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Well, you say, I've got good insurance, and I have confidence in my doctor, and, and we like our hospital. Well, we have all of that. But also, we have learned to pray first, rather than waiting until all else has been done. And finally, in broken desperation to bring our extremes to God and say, well, you know, there it is, if you can do anything. Instead of that kind of a feeling, let, let's instead cultivate in each other. And the way that we say things to each other, the way that we see God's work, let's cultivate this in each other, that we would first, when the first symptoms begin to hit, of some uh, additional attack in medical uh, needs in our bodies, or, or emotional crisis, or something like that, instead of waiting until the very last, let's first bring it to God. So if you're sick, bring your illness to God. And then the flip side of that is, if you're well, bring somebody else's illness to him. What a wonder that God has allowed us to be a part of the healing that is going on in this world today. The greatest healing of all is the healing of a broken, sin-sick heart. Somebody who has fallen and failed, and they know that they are grossly separated from God. They find a place to pray and ask God's forgiveness, invite Jesus to come in and be their Lord and their Savior. Let God in on everything, but certainly of all things, that greatest of all. Just to give a, a, a quick closing illustration, many years ago, I was a young pastor, had a busy day preaching. I got a call as I was leaving the building, heading home. I was just exhausted. I got a call that I needed to go to the hospital because there was a man who was tragically ill and was not expected to make it through the night. So I went, walked into the uh, Independent Sanitarium and Hospital, laid my hand on a gentleman. His doctor was in the room, I graciously stepped back and allowed the pastor to pray. I laid my hand on his fevered brow. Uh, I've never seen anyone struggle so for breath. And I prayed a simple prayer. I was exhausted. I had no eloquence, just a broken heart of a pastor who loved the man who was lying so near to death. Laid my hand on his forehead and prayed, Dear God, in Jesus' name, please touch him and heal him. Made my excuses, and after a very brief time of prayer, went on about my evening's business. It was the next day, possibly the day after that, very shortly, I went to check on him at the hospital, and he had already been dismissed. Went home. I couldn't help but ask, so what was the issue? He was so close to death, and they discovered he had aspirated a peanut and had developed pneumonia from that. And shortly after the simple young pastor had laid his hand on him and prayed, he coughed the peanut up, one home nearly beat me home. I mean, it was so close. And so that's the kind of stuff I'm saying. Would you just, if you're facing something, I may not, may not be that you've aspirated a peanut, but maybe you've just got something going on that is tough and difficult. Cut God in on it. Bring him in on it. Bring his massive heavenly resources to bear on your issue. Everything from your emotions right to the uh, terrible, tragic, physical illnesses that many face today because he's a healer. He is Jehovah Rapha. Our Father, help us to get this. Help us to realize that you really are good. 
You're a good person. We love you. We like you, Father. We love to even say that to you. What a joy to be around you and to feel your touch. And yes, your touch is so warm and so real and so wonderful. We couldn't exist without it. We open ourselves up to the touch of God. And we pray our prayer in Jesus' name. And I speak this to you, sir, in Jesus' name. Amen.